at 0503 hours, a Laleka 100 reconnaissance drone executed a figure 8 patrol pattern at its maximum operational altitude of 1,500 meters. Below, the occupied territory of Luhansk was still dim. The mission had entered a critical phase. Of its total 150-minute battery life, less than 25 minutes remained. This narrow window was the result of careful calculation, just enough time to reach the intelligence-designated target area, conduct a brief search, and return safely. Its operator, located 50 kilometers behind the front lines, methodically switched between sensor modes, white-hot for detecting thermal anomalies and a daylight optical camera for visual verification as dawn began to break. This mission was not random. Signals Intelligence S -I -G -I -N -T, had indicated an increase in high-value logistics traffic in this sector, particularly along the M04 highway, leading to a repair hub in Kadivka. At 0510 hours, the image analysis software at the ground control station flagged a consistent moving heat signature, matching the thermal profile of a heavy vehicle. The operator immediately directed the camera gimbal toward the anomaly and engaged the 30x optical zoom. The magnified image confirmed the target with high precision. A MAZ 537 tank transporter, an eight-wheel drive vehicle specifically designed to carry heavy loads in difficult terrain. Its cargo was a T-72B3 main battle tank a modern variant that serves as the backbone of armored forces. Although the tank showed signs of combat damage, its value remained extremely high. Returning it to the battlefield is far more resource efficient than replacing it with a new unit. This target was not merely opportunistic, it was a key component in the logistical chain of a war of attrition. The decision was made at the tactical command level. To ensure the success of the strike, the electronic environment had to be shaped. At 0512 hours, a planned diversionary strike was launched. Five FPV drones, each carrying a PG-7V anti-tank warhead, were simultaneously deployed to attack an identified command post on the front lines. This attack had a dual purpose. Tactically, it suppressed the enemy position. Strategically, however, its goal was far more critical, to compel the operators of the Russian Electronic Warfare, EW Battalion in the sector, to react. Their primary system immediately switched from a wide-area scanning mode to a high-power, focused jamming mode to neutralize the incoming FPV threat. This maneuver, as anticipated, created a temporary reduction in their electronic surveillance coverage of the quieter rear sector, opening a narrow corridor for the main strike asset. At 0515 hours exploiting this corridor, a Ram 2X loitering munition launched from its concealed catapult. Armed with a 3kg heat, high-explosive anti-tank warhead, its mission was singular to destroy the target designated by the Lalika 100. The Ram 2X did not fly directly. It followed a pre-programmed flight path using digital terrain data, allowing it to fly extremely low, maneuvering through valleys and behind hills to minimize radar exposure. Its composite airframe has a low radar cross-section, RCS, and its electric motor produces almost no heat or sound, giving it low observable characteristics. As the Ram 2X traveled approximately 30 kilometers, it entered the range of a point defense electronic system, positioned to protect high-value assets in the rear. At the ground control station, the operator saw the anticipated indicator. The rate of packet loss on the direct link to the Ram 2X began to spike the video signal started to flicker. The EW system had detected and was now jamming the drone's control frequency. For a conventional system, this would mean the loss of an asset. However, this system's architecture was designed for such a scenario. 
Both the Lalika 100 and the Ram 2X were connected through a Streamcaster mesh network, a Manet mobile ad hoc network. Without any command from the operator, the network protocol automatically detected the failure of the direct link. Within milliseconds, the network's algorithm recalculated the most efficient data route. The new optimal route was through the Lelika 100. Because the Lelika 100 was flying at 1,500 meters, it had a clear line-of-sight communication path to both the ground station and the low-flying Ram 2X, placing it above the effective cone of the ground-based jammer. The Laleka 100 instantly switched its function to become a high-speed aerial relay. On the operator's screen, after a brief flicker, the video feed from the RAM-2X stabilized. Full control was maintained. This was an unseen battle between two philosophies. Centralized, high-power jamming versus a resilient, decentralized network. The network had won. At 0548 hours, the RAM-2X arrived at the terminal point above the target. The operator took control from autonomous mode to manual terminal guidance. The clearly relayed video feed showed the MAZ-537 moving steadily, unaware of the approaching threat. Using the targeting interface, the operator placed the reticle over the transporter's engine compartment the most vulnerable point to ensure a total mobility kill. The drone's guidance system locked the coordinates, calculating the optimal dive angle. At 0549 hours, the strike command was executed. The Ram 2X performed its terminal dive, streaking downward in an unalterable ballistic trajectory. Upon impact, the heat warhead detonated. The chemical reaction inside compressed a copper cone liner turning it into a hypervelocity jet of super-plasticized metal moving at over 8,000 meters per second. This focused jet easily penetrated the steel engine cover, destroying the engine block and transmission with incredible kinetic and thermal energy. Seconds later, a much larger secondary explosion occurred as the transporter's 500-liter diesel fuel tank erupted, engulfing the vehicle and its cargo in a fireball. Above, the Lalika 100 recorded the destruction before finally turning back, its mission successfully completed. Watch your six.